Kulea and the Chief's Cloak by Alice Guild. Illustrations by George James and John Dinsmore. Kulea lived in Alaska during the summer, where the ground was not frozen and insects were easy to find. At the end of summer, he had to make a flight of thousands of miles to the islands of Hawaii, where it was warm all year round. Once Kulea left Alaska, there was no place for him to land until he got to Hawaii. This small creature soared to great heights in order to catch the wind that would carry him across the Pacific in just two days and two nights. When Kolea arrived at Ka'u on the island of Hawaii, he was exhausted. He was so thin that he barely cast a shadow, and his feathers were dull and bedraggled. He had to rest in the shade of his favorite kukui tree. He knew this area well because he returned to the same spot every year. Each of his relatives also returned to their special place. Young fledglings, making the long journey for the first time, had to find territory that had not already been claimed by one of their elders. After Kulea caught his breath, he began to walk around his plot of land. But something had changed while he was away. A large grass house stood in the middle of his field. Someone of great importance must live in such a magnificent hale. Just then, a boy came out of the house. Startled by the sight of Kolea, he exclaimed, Who are you? You're the scrawniest bird I've ever seen. I'm Kolea, and you're pretty scrawny yourself, replied the bird. Watch what you say, bird. My father is the greatest chief in the land, and I too will be a great chief one day. Kolea ignored the skinny boy and went about his business of pecking worms from the moist soil under the kukui tree. As the weeks passed, the boy and the bird learned to tolerate each other, but they never really became friends. Throughout the winter, the boy practiced with his spear and ate poi and ulu, and the muscles in his arms and legs became bigger and stronger. Throughout the winter, Kolea practiced long-distance flying and ate juicy worms. His once dull feathers evolved into a gold-tinged, kappa-like pattern. Each day, Kolea grew more beautiful, and each day, the young chief grew more jealous. The boy was relieved when springtime came, and Kolea spread his beautiful golden wings and flew away to Alaska. Over the summer, the boy thought about the Kolea and how strong he had become as his feathers began to shimmer in the sunlight. I too need to have beautiful feathers if I am to become the greatest chief in the land. And the boy thought about the Ahu'ula, feather cloak, that his family had been working on for many years. That cloak will be mine when I become the high chief. And he commanded his father's men to go deeper into the forest to bring back little tufts of yellow feathers from the mamo bird and red feathers from the i'iwi. The men trapped many, many birds with a sticky paste that they put on the branches of ohia trees. They plucked only a few precious feathers from each bird before releasing it back into the forest. It took many long months for the men to finish gathering enough feathers, and for the boy's mother, grandmother, sisters, aunts, and cousins to attach them to the fine cord webbing. When the cloak was finally completed, his wise grandmother told him to be patient. When he grew into it, he would receive the cloak as his own. The boy said to himself, When I wear this ahu'ula, I will be the greatest chief in the land, and everyone will kneel before me, and I will win all my battles and rule the entire land, and he became haughty. The impatient boy could not wait to show off his prize, so in the fall, when Koleo returned to Ka'u, emaciated with his feathers dull and molting, the young chief put on his yellow and red cloak and went out to greet him. See, he said, my feathers are always shining and beautiful. They prove that I will be powerful chief one day. You're wrong, replied Kolea. A powerful chief must be humble. Shredding around in a fine cloak does not make you a great leader. During our long journey, we Kolea are stripped of our finery. Each year, we must rebuild our courage, strength, and endurance, and only then are we rewarded with our new plumage. 
Unless you remove your cloak and work for your people, those beautiful feathers have little meaning. When the young man's father passed away, he became the high chief, but he was not happy. He knew that he wasn't as powerful as his father had been, and he was jealous of his cousin, a great warrior from the north who was gaining the respect and support of the people. Eventually, there was a terrible battle between the army of the south and the army of the north. The young chief of the south was vanquished, and the magnificent Ahu'ula was presented to his cousin, as a trophy of war and a symbol of highest rank. Although the victorious chief was the greatest of warriors and a respected leader, he was a humble man. He knew that the cloak was very special and he seldom wore it. His goal was to unite all of Hawaii into one strong kingdom, which he did. When this great chief died, the red and yellow feather cloak became part of the royal regalia and a symbol of leadership from the kings and queens of Hawaii who reigned after him. Today the Ahu'ula is displayed at the Bishop Museum, a place where everyone can visit. Each fall, Okoleo returns to the museum lawn to recover from its long flight from Alaska. Other Kolea also find their way home to lawns and parks and beaches throughout the Hawaiian Islands. In every neighborhood, children and parents and grandparents welcome the kolea, watching throughout the winter as it grows stronger and more confident each day. As spring comes and the kolea feathers take on their golden cup of pattern, it serves as a reminder that beautiful plumage is most meaningful when it is earned, through perseverance, humility, and hard work.